but number one, the density of the housing, single housing units is not acceptable to me. I'm not satisfied with the, the rationale behind that. Number two, the improvements to West Henry, do we need any improvements? I think we may, widening the street, maybe turn lanes for the, this resident. In any case, I would think, thirdly, I would think we could hold our, our, our precious green area for a while. What, what, what is the rush, ladies and gentlemen? What is the rush? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thomas Lingauer of 1250 West Marion Avenue. This seems like a deja vu. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I was up here and saying my, my concern is we have no idea what we're going to need in the future. That continues, you know, four years ago, we never knew we wanted a Vietnam wall, but thank heavens that we had space to put it. 20 years ago, the History Park was just a dream. We have, the dog park was since, I don't know when it came in to play, but it was something after Charlie. I, we did not have a, 20 years ago, we didn't need a new, a new library. We, des we desperately need one now, and thank heavens we have space to put it. I do not know what's going to happen 10 years from now, and neither does any of, of you. But we have found community space available. Had we, had we, have, had we have sometime in the last 20 years decided to subdivide or something, this area where I'm just talking about, we wouldn't have these things. And I think it's important to realize that owning the property and keeping the property for some unknown reason is, is, a, is a good thing for all of the citizens, not just a handful. And as previously talked here today, there's plenty of real estate available for development in Punta Gorda. We do not need additional real estate properties at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Mitchell. Good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome to the surprise party. Um, Rachel, our thoughts are with your family this Thank morning. You. So, uh, I'm Julie McGilvery. I live in PGI. Uh, three weeks ago, I didn't know I'd have dozens and dozens of new friends as a result of this. Um, it's great to see the community come together. Um, I'm glad we're finally having a good, open, transparent discussion. Two weeks ago, um, we didn't have the developer come up and make his presentation. So what we've done is, as you see here, um, another member of our Groundswell group put this together, and some of you have this. This is what the developer hasn't shown you, which is the relative size of lots. Um, also, if you could slide that up, please. Okay, here's the sketch that he drew out for us. Um, I think this is boilerplate from something else that he's done. Um, we've measured these out with contractors. They will not fit on 50-foot lots. This would require an 80-foot lot. Okay, so they're proposing 54, 5,500 square foot lots. So these are not, these are not, they may be the style, but they are not drawn to scale. You'd have to be about four foot tall, I think, to, to fit into this. Okay, if you could go to the next one. Um, we talked about best and highest value use. Um, this is what was originally, I think, discussed, this sort of a concept a few years ago, Howard mentioned. Um, this sort of thing, if you do decide to build out, would provide more revenue to the city. So, okay, next. Um, what I wanted to do was give everyone a vision for what potential down the road we talk about these things, but this is what another community in Florida has done. This is the sort of band shell that we could have to bring people together for the community. Next. Here's a fountain sort of a concept. Uh, we could even have this where it illuminates different colors at night, uh, that sort of thing to help bring people, again, to the community. So we could have public-private partnerships to do this sort of thing. Next. Botanical gardens, it's another concept. Next. And finally, we may have a final solution for the pickleball problem, so. 
So this is just another sort of thing that uh, uh, I wanted to give everybody a vision for what else we might be able to utilize the land for down the road to keep America or to keep uh, Punta Gorda, Punta Gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to have to take a quick break here. Uh, one more speaker, and then we'll be taking our recess. So go ahead. My name is Sherry Lenora. I live at 1532 Albatross Drive. And I am not an anti growth activist, as a developer has called us. I am very pro growth for um, Punta Gorda. And it's a good thing because in my neighborhood, within a block of me, there have been six houses built, and the ground is breaking for a seventh. So I don't think that we are lacking rooftops at this point, and certainly not the potential for rooftops. I think it's very important that we uh, keep this space open for future use, not necessarily a park. We probably don't need a park, another park right now. But we do need, desperately, a senior center. There is none to service those, this very, um, the demographic of this population that is like, why would there not be a senior center for these people? Um, we do def need to, res to reserve it for uh, future growth. Uh, and I am very for development, but I want wise development. Uh, we have, I think, a real problem here in this community, attracting younger people to work the restaurants, the businesses that we have and are going to develop e even more. And the reason for that is because they don't have affordable housing here. I don't think we need another 54 homes that are priced at $450,000. And personally, I don't think these houses can compete with the waterfront homes that, for, that are offered now for $450,000. What we do need are some homes in the price range of 250 to 350,000 uh, price range, where those families who are starting out can come to this community, find a job, live in a nice home as their maybe starter home. Now, back in my day, a starter home was not $350,000, trust me, but that's where it is right now. And so um, these people need to have a place to come, and they also need to be able to then build their way up and perhaps buy my home someday. That is what I think is smart growth. So I'm very much for growth, but I'm not for unfettered growth. I also want to point out that there's a slide. This is the linear park that was, is a, a part of the parcel that we're talking about. And if you put up the next piece of paper. Make sure his logo isn't on there. Make sure his logo. It appears that we're losing part of Linear Park. So not only do we have less green space, we're losing some of our current plan for green space. I urge the council to please keep this piece of property for future use. Um, we love Punta Gorda. We want to keep loving Punta Gorda. Thank you. Thank you. OK, at this time, I'm going to have to call the recess. And I would just, um, not to draw this out, but I have no idea how this is going to go. So if you feel the inclination to continue this until the next meeting, um, I would ask for that consideration or, you know, do, do what you want. I but think we have to. OK, well, you can, you can get there when. But I would ask for that consideration after you hear all the public comments. OK. Would that be OK? Yes, I mean, I, I presume what you would want to do is, is preserve the deliberation for the next meeting, but um, there, will, there will be an opportunity, notwithstanding, for any public comment, so um, the public will have an opportunity to come back at the next meeting sure. if that's what yes. you want and to it, do. Sure, yes, and it's their pleasure, too, so that would just be my recommendation. Okay, we're calling the recess, five minutes, we'll be back at 10.15. Thing with David, what, David, she is like to call the meeting back to order, please. No, somebody just handed it just at the break. Somebody handed it over here to pass over. Somebody handed it to pass over just before the break. I'd like to remind everyone if you have documents that you're passing out to us, please give the clerk a copy. Okay, go ahead. Please state your name for the record. Hi, uh, Julie Moriarty, Punta Gorda. Um, 
Last week I spoke about uh, the unlimited project completion time that the, re the uh, uh, developers re required in their proposal. It was a little bit of a concern for me. Nothing should go on forever. Um, two days ago, I sent an email to the city council. Oh, I'm done. I didn't touch it. Okay. The call is the light. It, the light screen. So. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Two days ago, I sent an email to the city council members and candidates. I'd like to share some of that here. Um, these have been distributed throughout here. All the council members have uh, a copy of it. Um, I can only provide a condensed version because of time. My 35 years in the field of construction have caused numerous red flags for me with the proposed plan of upscale homes. Some of those items that are on the, uh, the, the pamphlet that's been distributed and that the city council has. Um, most of the lots are, are too small for upscale homes. There, many of the lots are 55 by 100 feet. The setback requirements would leave little for a backyard. If you want to park your car in the front, you're going to have to be about 20 feet back, um, your, the back of your car will be on the street. Storm drainage requirements may require that swells be put on private property. Um, as already mentioned, the conceptual drawing that uh, was provided by the developer cannot fit on a 55 foot wide lot, um, and that's based upon the two car garage door being 16 feet wide, which is typical. This and other points itemized in the correspondence fails to support the starting price of 450000 for a smaller home. And if you extrapolate that out to the larger one, it would come out to be about over $580,000. Compared homes sold within the last 18 months in the immediate area that are not in the water have sold for anywhere from $202,000 to $417,000. I walked the property Saturday and stood downwind from the municipal yard. I could smell raw sewage. I've never seen an upscale development anywhere near anything related to sewage. This alone would make this a very tough sale. I created drawings. Um, you've seen some of them up here. This one, this, this represents the tight um, compaction of the homes. Um, things are relative up there. You see the car that would be parked in the driveway and it would be butted up right to the, to the road itself. <clears throat> City Manager Howard Kunick responded to my email. In his response, Mr. Kunick assured that the drainage, building construction, road layout, site layout, and some of all, some of, um, and zoning, excuse me, all will be handled by the permitting process, allaying some of my concerns. But he also added, in addition, the developer is fully aware of the master pumping station location and knows that it will remain in its present location. <coughs> we try very hard to eliminate, eliminate to, excuse me, we try very hard to limit odor emanating from the station, but realize that at times there will be such an odor depending upon wind conditions, chemicals, lift station failures, etc. We already addressed this issue when we receive any. Am I done? Are you finished? Um, we, we already addressed this issue when we receive any complaints from the area. Again, the developer is fully aware of the situation and feels single family homes would be appropriate for this site. It's comforting to know that the city has done its part in ensuring the developer is fully aware of these issues. Should the development proceed, I trust the developer, the builder, and anyone else associated with the sale of the proposed properties provide the same level of awareness for prospective buyers. Anything otherwise would be unconscionable. Thank you. Good morning, Jerry Waxler, McCrory Law Firm. I'm here today on behalf of White Peterman and PGI Homes. I just wanted to speak very briefly to some of the benefits of this project. Um, as Mr. Kunick indicated earlier, the original proposals, the original thinking was that this would be a 15 unit per acre um, mixed commercial residential project or site. This proposed project will reduce that density, turn it into single family homes, um, makes it more compatible with what's actually around it. And we think that is a benefit to the community. The second thing I wanted to point out is that the construction of this will likely be done in conjunction with the construction and permitting of the library. That allows, as they look at a master, for instance, a master stormwater system and some other shared infrastructure, allows for reduced costs for the library, which provides more dollars to be used to create a library, which is what this community envisions for itself. 
And finally, I think it's very important to talk about some of the fiscal benefits of converting this property from city-owned property to privately-owned property. Immediately upon closing, this property will go back on the tax rolls and will generate revenue for the city. Um, that revenue will increase as homes continue to be built. The city is already struggling to find the budget to maintain the private property that it currently owns. We have nothing, there's nothing in the long range plan in your long range um, CIP for new parks and new development. Private um, groups had to even fund the park elements on Gilcrest Park. So while we talk about retaining the space, what we don't talk about is the cost of retaining the space versus the revenue that it would generate. It would generate direct revenue in terms of property taxes, direct revenue in terms of impact fees paid upon development. It would create indirect revenue to the city from the increase in business to, the local, uh, to our local businesses from the new residents, as well as um, indirect impacts from the additional construction jobs that would be created to put in the infrastructure and to build these homes. Overall, when you look at it on balance, the benefits that this project generates over, um, overtake the potential detriments. You have an abundant amount of green space in the city and a very abundant amount in the surrounding county. Let's put this property to use that will provide immediate and direct benefits to the city. And given that Mayor Kiesling had to leave, I understand for, for personal reasons, we would support a continuance. This is an issue that's too important uh, not to have the full council weigh in on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, my name is Randy Fassett. Uh, I live here in Punta Gorda. I've moved here about 31 years ago. Um, and since then, I've developed and built about 600 condos here in PGI. And I did look at this property with the thought of maybe putting condominiums on it, or rental housing, or apartments. And you think this room is full now. <laughs> it would have been twice as full. So I thought, well, I'm not gonna go there. And since then I saw this particular project being uh, proposed and I says, this is perfect. This is what we need. It's close to downtown. It's uh, in character with our historic district. It's uh, uh, affordable. And I was flabbergasted to think that it did not get voted through. But it didn't, and here we are. And I am here to speak in favor of it uh, uh, to the council members uh, that uh, soon will be voting on it. As, as the developer said, this is not the last stage in this development. It's, uh, it's going to come before uh, city uh, staff for further evaluation. Uh, this, it's a concept that I've went through many times uh, and, it, and it's gonna get tweaked by, by staff and by council members. Uh, but this is, uh, this is, we're at a point, or the developer's at a point that he needs to say uh, yes or no, we need to move forward or, or get voted down. And certainly he has spent a lot of money to get to this point in time. And the city has invited uh, uh, development proposals and now you're taking a second guess at it. I just don't understand that part of it, but uh, that's here, here and there. But I am fully, in favor of this moving forward. I think it's needed and I, I hope that it helps get rid of our blank open space uh, in our downtown area that we need to get developed for residential or for uh, commercial and, and retail and, and this will help that condition. And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Randy. Good morning. My name is Tom Thornberry. I live at 3166 Lakeview Boulevard, Port Charlotte, Florida. I've been a resident of Charlotte County since 1972. I had dark hair then and a flat belly. Things change over the time. It is what it is. I also own Charlotte Plumbing Incorporated. I'm a plumbing contractor here. And if uh, the people in this room that are here uh, over the last 35 years, if you've built here, uh, there's a good chance we plumbed your home. Um, I've known this uh, young gentleman a long time, this developer. I knew his father prior to that. Um, I do, my wife and I do have a little bit more personal stake. We are now proud owners 
of a downtown historic lot on Olympian Goldstein. In fact, if this, if I'd have known this, I might have waited and moved into one of those patio homes out there and not bought downtown. But it's a five minute walk downtown <laughs> and it'll be a 10 minute bike ride out to this project. I've done plenty of these projects before, probably 25 of them. Uh, I have 40 employees and family members. We all frequent downtown. We love downtown Punta Gorda. I'm going to retire in downtown Punta Gorda. I don't have the luxury of where you, some of you folks are now, but I'm going to have it soon. My job and sole job at Charlotte Plumbing is to stay, stay three or four months out ahead of my employees, making sure that we have the work. Thank you, and I would like to see that there is a continuance on this. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, Tom Hamilton. I uh, live in uh, Jamaica Way uh, uh, in Punta Gorda. Uh, I was initially against developing this project. I wanted to put it in inventory and this kind of thing. Because basically I said, well, what are you going to do with the money? I said, you know, we could have this for future use, and I've heard a lot of good uses potentially in the future. But then I said, well, what about current use, okay, for the money? Is this property's... Uh, if uh, you went with this developer scheduled to generate about a million and a half dollars, that's not to say also generate you know, fifty thousand dollars in revenue. Whereas if you did a park in the future, you'd actually have a cost. So you actually, if you did this project, you'd actually have a revenue versus a cost. Well, how about the million and a half? Well, what other things are we doing in the community that's going to cost us a million and a half? Well, first we're going to be doing Alligator Creek, and even though we have a plan for a proposal for how we pay for Alligator Creek, what I'd like to recommend is that we go ahead with this project and we take these monies and we use it to actually pay for Alligator Creek uh, cut. Okay? Uh, in that case, uh, we would be benefiting uh, all the people within Punta Gorda uh, and it would uh, we actually see an immediate thing. So I'm just saying uh, you got a million and a half dollars coming in on this property. Let's dedicate it to something like Alligator Creek. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Karen Turnbull, Punta Gorda Isles, um, for the last 25 years. Um, it was mentioned earlier that we don't have the, the PGI area is not uh, brimming with kids which is fine but it has lots of pets and i say this because a dog park meets our need uh, as a playground meets the need for kids the amenities um, are limitless that could be offered in this spot which is particularly unique because of access many older people have trouble seeing, they have trouble driving at night. Close access is very important to our current population. I believe, I, I have nothing against the developer whatsoever, but I do believe the benefits to a huge majority of current residents outweigh the relatively short-term benefits to developers and workers finally i have a safety concern there's two ways into punta gorda isles there's ikea sta and there's marion uh right now the traffic is bad during tourist season if you're sitting here at olympia and 41 you often have to wait for two light changes now if you're sitting there on 41 going to marion we're backed up on the bridge during tourist season. If we think that's bad now, the last thing we need to do is add more cars west of 41. I believe that the council needs to step back. I believe this is premature. I believe this, along with Akia Sta and Vivante, are patchwork knee-jerk developments. I believe that you need to step back, talk about green space, talk about the future, talk about where other revenue could be raised, 
prior to even considering this. So in terms of continuing the discussion, if we were to continue the discussion, I would request that a lot more planning be done and presented prior to the proposal being made. I was here at a meeting not too long ago and a woman asked about her sewer. She didn't know whether to put in a new sewer because, but, and the answer she received was, well, we're not sure about when, we, it'll be a long time. That's not good enough, okay? We need to know exactly how you're gonna get people out of Punta Gorda Isles during a hurricane when there's thousands of more people there. It's hard right now. We need to know specifics. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, good morning. I'm TJ Thornberry. I'm sorry, sweating a little bit. It was a little warm out in the lobby, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad that we have a fire marshal working the door. Um, it, it says how much, how passionate we are about this subject. I didn't come to the last uh, like two weeks ago when this was heard because quite frankly, I thought it was a shoe in. Um, I want to start by thanking and congratulating the council for bringing this back. Uh, I think it's important whenever you have questions that aren't answered and uh, things that need to be, uh, that warrant further dis discussion that you took the courage to do that. And I think it's a great thing. I don't think that's a negative at all. Um, secondly, I build downtown. Um, I just finished my own house at 330 West McKenzie Street. Uh, we have two houses going on Gray Street. I can tell you hands down, I get questions and calls every day uh, when people say what the downtown experience is, it's where this project's located, believe me. Um, really, it goes from the corner of Henry and, and 41 now, all the way across where Henry borders PGI, back down Retta. That is the new downtown experience. People want to walk to Fisherman's Village. They want to ride their bike downtown. Um, some people may not be able to walk from this project to downtown, but I can tell you half the people, if not more, that the calls that I'm getting are young professionals. And this project is perfectly suited for that. Uh, the city asked for this as part of our strategic plan. All the pluses have been laid out. Um, and I, I really feel like, um, you know, if you, if you have a lot, the lot sizes as your issue or the house is being too close together, when by gosh, don't buy a house in there. Don't live there. The people who buy in there want that. That's why they're going to buy it. And it's, I think it's highly marketable. So um, thank you again for bringing this back. I really, really hope that this is a reconsidered decision and uh, that we're not sending a negative message to growth. I understand the green space, trust me. I'm, I'm born here, I, I was, I'm from here. I, I grew up on and off my whole life here and I don't wanna see the charm and the character of, or of uh, Punta Gorda in Charlotte County, but especially Punta Gorda, diminished in any way. And this project is smart. It's been asked for in our strategic plan. It fits every piece and if anything, then some because the value of the property is, is in line with the appraisal or the purchase price is in line with the appraisal and the density is a lot less than it could be. So it could be a lot less attractive. And if we're talking about future use needs, who has a crystal ball? I mean, who, how do we know what's gonna happen economically tomorrow? So I think this is a win-win for everybody and I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mark Hazel, uh, Punta Gorda Isles. Uh, wasn't prepared to speak today, but I figured I had to. Um, I moved here full time uh, a year ago with my family. I'm an engineer. I work in technology. I think I'm kind of the people you want to get in here. Uh, I own two properties here. Uh, I have to say that one of the reasons why I came here was because Punta Gorda is a, a blank slate. I think, it's, I think it's ready to be what it wants to be. Unfortunately, I don't think it's being planned correctly if this is going in. I don't think it's a great thing. <clears throat> I don't think it's a great solution for the problem of this open space. I don't think it's a problem to have the open space. I think it's great to have the future use for it. Um, I also wanted to state real quick that if projects like this are what's coming in, I don't think you're going to pull in young people and professionals. I think you're going to pull in more of the same. You're going to have empty roofs all the time throughout the year. No businesses are going to be helped, no uh, patrons. And uh, I think it's actually going to diminish the quality of life in Punta Gorda. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Graham. Um, I've lived in Charlotte County uh, for the most part since 1974. I have a business right across the street. I'm in the title industry. Uh, I know a little bit about real estate and I've watched what's happened in this county for a very long time. I look at the vacant commercial properties uh, because I am a person that hangs downtown a lot. I spend a lot of time in the restaurants and the shops um, 
And uh, I remember Lashley Park being empty for a very long time until we found a local resident that believed in Punta Gorda. And the reason that said empty is because the national companies, the larger restaurants, the larger groceries, those people that looked at that project, they measure your rooftops from one, three, and five miles out. And every one of them always said the rooftops aren't there. The reason we have vacant commercial property downtown now is because we can't get the smaller groceries, the Trader Joe's, the Publix, you know, they don't want to be downtown. Why? Because the, the rooftops don't support it. So if we want to see the other things develop downtown and even go across towards Cooper Street and those things all de develop, the fact is, is we need more rooftops and we need those incomes. And they need to be near that property to get something to happen downtown. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning. My name is Maureen Groff. Please forgive me. I just came from a Zumba class. Um, truthfully, I don't think the property is worth developing. And the reason is because of the pump house, which is obvious, and the dog park. Once you get people moving in there, especially if you're going to get people who are willing to pay that kind of price for a house, they're going to complain about how stinky it is there. And it is. I walk past there every day with my dog. It smells terrible. So they're going to complain, they're taxpayers. Then the city is going to have to do something about that property and cleaning up the smell. The second issue, again, is the dog park. I have a dog. I personally don't bring my dog there. But the people are going to start complaining about barking. People who live on Henry Street now complain about barking. So what's going to happen? The city's going to have to go in. They're going to have to move the dog park anyway. Right now, we have people complaining about pickleball noise. And that's just red to esplanade. And those people seem to carry a lot of weight because they hear a little pickleball noise. So now you're having people move in. You're charging them a lot of money for a house. I agree they're on top of one another. It's a bad use of that space. If you really feel you have to develop that space, put less houses in there. Why are we packing houses on top of one another? Our town is packed enough. And as I said before, we've got plenty of property available in this town. Uh, along the canals, there's still property that can go up for sale. There's property on the golf course. There's property in the city that we can develop before we develop that. Also, the my person before me just addressed, what about the east side of town? We've got lots of property out there. If we, we could build beautiful communities on the east side of town that people can walk into the city and use it instead of using that property and jam-packing it full of homes. I think it's a mistake, and I think it's going to be nothing but problems. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. I don't really need this. My name is Rob Nadair. I live in, uh, on Deborah Drive here in Punta Gorda. I've been here 17 years, and I have no plan suite. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I get excited very easy. And what I get excited about is our little town. Our town has charm. Our town has wonderful people from different areas. They have different backgrounds. And that's one reason we have lots of volunteers. And I volunteer a lot, OK? But where I'm coming from is green space is important. Development's important. But the real reason this gentleman or his company wants to put that piece of development there is money. It's a good price, OK? And I'm concerned about Naples, Sarasota, Venice, and right now this particular area right here has the best buy coming from those two areas. So it's more important to me and my family, and I don't have an economic reason for this. I don't make a dime doing this, okay? I'm not sponsored from any other organization for this. I want to keep it the way it is. I'm not old. I don't make any money out of this, but we've got a thing going, and I don't want to get it screwed up. The other thing I want to say is, God bless, we're good people. Thank you. Hi, my name is Matt Ubelacker. Um, I graduated from Charlotte High in 1978, and my two older children graduated from Charlotte High, and my youngest graduated from Port Charlotte High. I've been in the area a long time, and all I know is that the city of Punta Gorda solicited bids for this property for 15 units per acre. They got a proposal for five units an acre, 
and then they're being crucified that they're trying to build too many houses on top of each other. It, that project is gonna be a beautiful project for downtown. Um, all the businesses in downtown need more people that are walking distance or bike riding distance. The city had their um, utility um, thing there. Um, Hurricane Charlie messed it up. They found cheaper land and built that out. That makes this land more valuable for this type of project, not for um, things that don't bring money into the city. There is plenty of land for parks. We have Gilcrest Park, you have Lashley Park, all within like a mile radius. Um, there's more places that people need parks a little outside the city. So I believe that this project is very important to the businesses in downtown and to the residents in Panagotta Isles. Also, um, I believe that if this project goes through, it will bring more people to this area from other places that will bring more people to this area. Um, the housing that is built by PGI Homes is incredible. And anyone that's been in any of their models or any of their homes, they're beautiful. They do beautiful work for the last 25 years. So thank you very much. Thank you. Darcy Hall, Punta Gorda. Um, it's all about money and I know the city needs money. It's when is it not going to need money? But, you know, if we sell it, we don't have it anymore. And, you know, just look at, I know we're not New York City, but just think what New York City could do if they sold Central Park. You know, I mean, millions, billions maybe of dollars. And it's their green space. They use it, they need it. And rooftops, we need rooftops, but we need year round rooftops. We, you know, we sell, we have, we definitely support our businesses during season. So we need year-round rooftops, and I don't know how we do that, but it's not by having $400,000 homes packed in and losing our green space forever. This is city property, and we need to keep it city property for the future. I think Senior Citizen Center or a band shell would be awesome. Those are awesome ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Scott Eason and I'm a resident of Punta Gorda. I've been here since 2002 and I'm here to ask the City Council not to sell the Henry Street property. I'm here to ask that the property be preserved as a public space and as a green space. On the surface it's easy to look at public places and see them as nothing more than physical location but beneath the surface these places can be so much more. There are locations where the community comes alive, where bonds among neighbors are strengthened, and where strength of belonging is fostered. The future health of our community and our little city depend on healthy public places being available. We have an opportunity right now to preserve this irreplaceable asset for the good of all. The City Council has an opportunity to continue to give itself a legacy of providing for future residents. The project, for a, the project for public spaces defines placemaking as the art and science of developing public spaces that attract people, build community by bringing people together, and create local identity. Public spaces are sought out by so many as a way to get out of the house, enjoy nature, and enjoy each other. Just looking at the parks in town, we can see the frequency of use. The little park at Ikea Stan Bell Harbor is beautifully loved and cared for by volunteers. The path around the city is absolutely fabulous. I wish we had more public waterfront. I'm very concerned about the future of the Ponce Park waterfront area, which is loved and used by so many. The central thought of creating public space lies in its emphasis on putting people's needs and aspirations process of the designing the community. It recognizes that while planners can give a place structure and access, it's the community that gives its heart and vibrancy. Ultimately, placemaking creates public spaces for the community with the community. To do this, the City Council needs to keep the Henry Street property even if its exact future is not defined today. Let let a citizens group do that. 
There are plenty of public spaces around for houses and condos. We need more breathing room, not more buildings. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jeff Barlow. I live on Bimini Lane, PGI. I think it's rather naive to think that 54 rooftops are going to change the downtown uh, business district, that it's going to help these companies to survive. <clears throat> As mentioned, a lot of these folks are going to be snowbirds. Well, during the during season, you don't need additional rooftops. It's during the off season you need people here to support them. So I think it's very naive to even think that rooftops are going to make a difference at this point, unless you're looking at a development that's going to bring in two, three hundred uh, potential rooftops. Then you're looking at something. There's plenty of those type properties available on Airport, Taylor, and then. I think as a couple of the developers and builders have spoke about, the Henry Street area is, I guess, the hot spot. There's plenty of private property that's available on the market today where you could site similar projects. Um, so that really should not be an issue. Um, just in closing, one thing I just want you to think about, as soon as you ink a deal, you cannot undo it. You can call for as many revotes as you want to and, and future discussions as you want to. As soon as you ink a contract, the property is gone. It will no longer be available for any public use. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this issue? Please come to the podium. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lisa Neff. I'm a Punta Gorda Isles resident on Pine Island Court. I'd like to say that I'm for this project. I think that this is a fabulous use for this land. It's, can, uh, it's in keeping with the uses on two sides. You've got residential use on the south side of Henry Street, which no one seems to be talking about today. This would just kind of advance that residential neighborhood across Henry Street. I think the people in those houses might like to see more residential use across Henry from them. Um, the property is the property is set up already in the land use plan to be developed. Keeping it in green space is not in keeping with the land use plan. And this property is about 15 acres and it's zoned for 15 units an acre right now. That you do the math on that, that's 225 homes that could be in there. If you think what's proposed is tight, that's nothing compared to what it's zoned to be done. So I think the proposal before us is a fabulous one, given that um, we've got a local builder willing to do luxury homes and a lower density. I think we should really seriously consider this. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Steve Fabian. I live in Punta Gorda Isle. I've been here for 25 years, 30 years. I, we heard the developers say, this is not the beginning. This is, you know, we're going to have to look at this project in the future. It's not a thing. It's, it's whether we move forward or not. I've heard comments about uh, majority of the people want this, uh, want us not to, to sell it. What is the majority? I heard at the last meeting there was 160, I think, some signatures. We got over 13,000 taxpayers in this city. 160 is not a mandate. I've heard comments about a senior citizen thing. That's great. I think it's a great idea. I think there is a memo of understanding between the city and the Punta Gorda Housing Authority for property that they own where they could put a senior citizen, but it takes money, people, money. So, you know, we could sit here all day long and, and play what ifs, what ifs. I think I would like to see the council vote and move forward on this. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else wishing to speak on this issue? Please come forward. My name is Lauren Ben, and I live on Rosa Lane in Punta Gorda. 
And I'm for the project. I'm for the project because I believe in growth and I believe in a town that, even as one of the councilmen said, uh, we're going to grow our uh, population by 50% in the next 24 years. That's really only a 1.3% growth per year. It's pretty slim. We need growth in this city. Cities need to grow. So I'm for the project. I think it's a responsible project. I think it'll help the downtown area. I think it'll help the retail. I think it'll help the commercial. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Susan Diaspera. I live in Punta Gorda and have since 2003. I am a realtor. I listen to a lot of people that want to live by downtown. We have a great downtown facility area. Lots of great things to do. Gilcrest Park, along the water. We've, we've worked so hard and spent so much money in developing and promoting that. And when we buy our houses, we all think location, location, location. And we have a lot of people that really would like to be closer to downtown. They want to ride their bikes. They want to walk. They want to go and enjoy what Fisherman's Village has to offer. And they don't always want to get in their cars. Or maybe they don't drive well after dark. So location, again, is important. The thing, too, is I've heard a lot of different pieces of information today. And to be honest with you, I don't know what is assumed and what has been provided by the developer. I would like to see this go further so that we really have some presentation from them so that we are very accurate in knowing, are the lots really 55 by 100? Maybe he would consider, they would consider doing four homes instead of five. I've worked on quite a few projects in the past back in Vail, Colorado, and it's a give and take, and I think that if we at least give them the opportunity to present the facts to us and we can see it, then we have a chance to project and give our discrepancies or what we object to to see if they could work on it and make it come together. It's not set in stone. The deal's not, in, not done at all. They're just asking to go forward to have more discussion. And I think it's important that we know so that someday we don't sit back and go, oh, gee, if I had only known a little bit more, maybe I would have been for it. I'd like to know more. I, w I don't want to close my mind and say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm against it. Even though I'm a realtor, it's not about money. It's about this community. I moved away a couple of years ago, and I came back because I love Punta Gorda, and I love the people here. So I don't want to see it change. I don't think there's anything wrong with development. And to be honest with you, Anthony probably could go someplace else and put this project together and not have this discussion and go through this hardship. But I think it means enough to him, and he sees a need for it. And I think, again, location, location, location. Let's give people a chance to live downtown and enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sue Carmen. I live in District 1 in Punta Gorda, and I am against the project, as are many of my neighbors. Um, not to repeat everything everyone said, but they keep saying green space and open space. I don't know that that's what that property can be used for, but I think we need to save it for the future and decide what to do then because you only own so much land. If somebody else wants to take their land and sell it, they can, but the city should hold on to what they have. And that whole walk to the restaurant thing, I think I'm relatively young in the community and I can tell you we live in that area, and I'm in my car, so that whole walking at night and getting the rainstorm really doesn't work. Um, <laughs> that's all. I'm just very much think you should wait and hold on to it and see what the future holds. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else will want to speak on this issue? Anyone? Last call. Move to close the public hearing. Second. It's not really a public hearing. Oh, it's hearing. not a public hearing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Public hearing is closed. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, you have the opportunity to uh, reconsider the vote because you've approved the motion for reconsideration. Uh, and you can vote today or you can continue the discussion until the next um, city council meeting, whatever your pleasure might be. I would prefer to continue the discussion until the next meeting. I would prefer to continue the discussion until the next meeting. 
I guess I have a question on um, protocol. If there are two people that want to continue and two people that don't, we, then we reach a, we don't have a consensus. Do we continue it? <clears throat> well, it doesn't re really require a vote, but a consensus. And I think the mayor had indicated her uh, opinion that she would like to have it continued so that she have an opportunity to, to um, vote on it as well. So it's it's really you know up to you to decide how you want to handle this, and um, and I think a consensus would work. And if um, if it's a tie, then I think uh, since you've heard from the the mayor, even though it's not a vote but a consensus, then that would carry over to the next meeting. I'd like to see us continue it. <clears throat> I don't feel a need to. Too, but obviously there are three people who feel that there is a need to so I, I would support the continuance although reluctantly okay so we'll continue this until the October 19th, October 19th meeting <clears throat> thank you This thing, was it? I, I think this is going to go off. I was trying to. I think it was going to stop. I get it. I don't know what you're getting. I'm going to get it. I think I fixed it. Especially on the next door. You want to take a break? We're going to take a five minute break. We'll be back at, well, we'll be back at 11.05.